I said I was going to have an upper body video uploaded before the end of 2019, but it was a lie. It was a lie. Hi, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a back workout. I know I said <laughs> that I would have my up, uh, an upper body workout of some form up before the end of 2019 and it didn't happen. I'm sorry, but it's just so hard to film upper body sessions. As you'll see, some of the angles are a little bit like, really? But it's so hard filming upper body when you're by yourself because... I don't even know but it's just so much harder to get the right angle to get the right height for the camera and stuff like that but I tried my best so please bear with me I am aware that I said I would have an upper body workout up by the end of 2019 and I didn't it was a lie <laughs> just like Rihanna though Rihanna lies too she said her album would be out in 2019 and it's not the yesterday's video is a back workout I always get asked how to get a smaller waist, how to get a waist like yours, i.e. me. I'm not going to beat around the bush or anything here. I've always genetically had the the shape that I have to my stomach, which is basically, I'm so bored of saying this now. Um, I have quite narrow ribs at the bottom. My ribs come in quite a lot, so my waist is quite small. Um, and then my hips stick out a bit in comparison. I'm no Kim Kardashian and I do have hip dips, but the ratio between my waist and my hips there is quite a large difference just because of how small my waist is. Um, if you're wondering measurements wise, my waist varies from like 23 to 25 inches depending on if I'm cutting, bulking, that sort of stuff. And the widest point of my glutes is like 37, 38. I don't know, I've not measured myself in a while. Um, but yeah, so that's me. That's I'm not going to beat around the bush and I'm not going to lie and say training abs gets you a smaller waist because... I've, I've always genetically been like this however one way that you can um give the illusion of a smaller waist give the illusion of a more hourglass figure if you are more narrowly built naturally which there is nothing wrong with but if you do want to add more shape and you do have a typically narrower frame my suggestions would be build up your lower body you cannot build your hips so let's just take that out of the equation but you can build up the muscle on your legs you can build up your glutes and you can also build up your back so obviously if your back comes out wider by comparison it's going to make your waist look a lot smaller so training back can really help you to get that hourglass physique um girls don't worry about looking manly from training back i do not look manly well i don't think i do i like the way that my back looks um and it's one of my goals for 2020 to actually improve my back a lot so yeah Training back will definitely help you if you do have a narrow frame and you want to build more of an hourglass shape to yourself. Obviously, genetics are going to play a massive role in the overall shape that your body has, but training back can definitely help. So, yeah, one thing I do want to mention just before I get into the voiceover with the workout clips is the key thing with most back movements is the stretch and the squeeze. So you'll see with things like the T-bar rows, I'm really, like, stretching and then really squeezing the weight when I come back in. And with most pulling movements, you want to make sure that you're keeping your elbows tucked into the side i'm saying that now because i'm aware of how short my workout clips are so i'm not actually gonna have time to go over all this in them but yeah on with the workout so the first exercise is rack pulls this is basically the top half of a deadlift and what you want to do on these is just make sure that you are keeping your spine fairly neutral and you're not hyper extending when you are locking out at the top Make sure that you're really getting that squeeze in your back when you are lifting the weight up. These can really help with your deadlift strength and from here I just decrease the reps and up the weights and work my way up to 90kg. So the next exercise is lat pull down. What you want to make sure that you're doing here is that you're leaning back ever so slightly and make sure that when you're pulling the weight down you're basically squeezing your shoulder blades together like you've got like a pen or something that you're trying to hold between your shoulder blades that's quite a useful cue for getting that mind to muscle connection and make sure that you're getting the full stretch and squeezing so when you are taking the weight back up make sure that you are extending your arms but not locking your elbows out at the top so the next exercise is t-bar rows this is what i was on about with the stretch and squeeze so you can see i'm fully extending and then really squeezing same thing with rack pulls you want to make sure that you're keeping your spine 
fairly neutral looking at the floor in front of you and making sure that you're not shrugging the weight too much so the next exercise is single arm bent over rows what you want to make sure that you're doing here is like with the t-bar rows keeping your elbow of the working arm really close into the side and again just squeezing when you get to the top make sure that you are feeling this in your back if you struggle with the mind to muscle connection like i said imagine that you're trying to squeeze a pen or something between your shoulder blades the next exercise is rear delt flies i'm using a machine here but you can do these bent over with dumbbells bear in mind you will probably need to use lighter dumbbells um, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory and if you are using the machine there's instructions on the machine but basically you're just pushing the weight outwards and back in keeping a slight bend in your elbows I don't know why my right elbow looks so weird I think it's maybe because I broke it when I was little I like Harry Potter weird so the next exercise is a superset it's of overhead tricep extensions and dumbbell bicep curls so basically with the tricep extensions i'm doing these seated i'm lowering the weight as much as i can and pressing it back up using my triceps and you would just want to make sure that you're keeping your elbows close to the side of your head as you can with your bicep curls you want to make sure that you're fully extending at the bottom my form isn't that great on these actually um watching these but yeah you want to make sure that you're fully extending when you do go down and squeezing all the way back up and make sure that you're not rocking too much i'm rocking a little bit there because with all the exercises make sure that you're keeping your elbows pinched into your side and that it's your biceps doing the work not your forearms um i just want to disclaim so the rack pulls the lat pull down the t-bar rows and the reverse flies they were my actual that was filmed during my session um and then i was taking too long with filming and the gym was getting a bit busy and i'm i'm a little bit like mm, about getting other people in it so just to disclaim because i know that some people will be like that way it looked too easy especially with my uh, single arm bent over rows it was the bent over rows bicep curls tricep extensions i basically finished my workout and did those properly with my working weights and then i filmed the clips because i didn't want to be like oh i forgot to film this so i filmed them afterwards and obviously i used a lighter weight because i wouldn't have been able to lift it properly because i was absolutely knackered um but yeah just to disclaim because not that it should matter what someone lifts but i just know that some people will think well how can you back pull that but you can only single arm bent over row that like i know how some people get um and like i said with everything else i filmed the first set so from there i always increase the weight and push myself so the full reps and sets and everything is going to be in the description box i would have gone over it in the actual video um voiceover but i think it's more important to get the form across rather than the sets and reps so they will be in the description box below thank you for the feedback on my glute workout video um voiceovers are definitely more useful to some people clearly from the feedback i've been getting so i appreciate the feedback and it's super super helpful um i think voiceovers are going to be the way forward when i am wanting to do a more in-depth one i'm not going to do it for every single workout that i post because sometimes it might just be in like a daily vlog especially because i do want to do some more of those this year um just content wise um so not every single video is going to have a voiceover if it has a workout in but if i'm doing it more in depth like this i think i've gathered that the voiceovers are pretty helpful i'd also like to try out um i think beth fitness uk and chrissy cella have done videos like this where they're talking in the gym like they're actually in the gym and then they're doing the set they're explaining it and then they're doing the set so if people are interested in a format like that then let me know i'm not sure how confident i would be actually vlogging in the gym but i don't really care that much anymore it's more just the thought of it and then when i'm there no one even really looks no one even really cares um so yeah let me know if that would be another format that people would be interested in but yeah, thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm nearly at 10k, which is crazy because I I actually wrote down when I started this in July that I wanted 5k by Christmas. So to nearly be at 10k in January is a little bit crazy. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.